great. I was trying to figure out how to unmute myself. Can everyone hear me? <laughs> yes. Perfect. Um, so first we wanted to show lessons uh, learned from journey one. So in our group, we share uh, two very interesting projects, one from Community Giacomo, which is an app where you take pictures of issues and basically make the local authority aware of the problem. So it can be something that's like a broken traffic light, for example. And the other example we had was more of an kind of open data source for citizens to know existing incidents in the roads, review status of the road, for example, for cyclists as well, uh, that can be used to kind of design the actual route or even for a hiker. Uh, and some of the very interesting results that we've seen is that uh, in the Nevada case, the 400 people were even using it per month. So it means that the portal was very much participatory, which is kind of the, the goal of an open data platform. And in the case of um, Jamo in the Ravenna region, um, basically it's kind of simplified it on the end of the municipality. So we managed to, they managed to manage a report from down from 30 past days to 10 days, kind of decrease the number of reports thanks to the fact that uh, even the one problem was reported by five people, it was only producing one report. Um, and they also trained a number of people. And I think some of the key messages that came out was also that it's rather to kind of start small from a small system that can be easily adapted throughout the process. Um, and also a very interesting question that came up was also on marketing strategy and how to kind of engage citizens. So um, what our colleagues shared is that it basically is the best way to provide citizens when, with information when they need it. Um, and then simply sharing the link. So kind of creating that idea of resharing among citizens when they know that it works. Um, and then next slide, please. Uh, and we also discussed uh, some of the challenges that also come along those platforms and applications. So I think the main one is basically keeping the citizens engaged, but also the first step is to actually get them to use um, the geo portal and kind of create their own maps and be engaged when they see a problem on the street and they need to report it. Um, and I think that's very much linked as well to demographical challenges uh, in the region. So some of the conversations that come up is that even though it's digital, it means that if you have people of different ages, it can sometimes mean different tools. So whether um, an app can be easier to, for example, some of the younger generations certain generations might be more used to simply making a phone call. So it's also something that needs to be taken in mind when designing these sort of solutions and applications. Um, and on the other hand, on the data side, I think what's very important is um, a challenge of kind of having the same format of data to then ensure that it is reusable and replicable, um, but also maintaining the high quality data, especially in a case when it's a geo portal that if it's participatory, that users kind of maintain that high quality data. Um, but some of the, those are the challenges that need to be taken into account, but I think there are a lot of positive lessons that came out. Um, so a really nice quote that I captured was from, um, was from our colleague who said, to foster innovation, we need to design tools that are fun to use and that allow user experimentation and that changes should require less than a minute. So really the focus on not just the end user, but also kind of uh, municipality and making sure that um, it's easy to use or kind of on both ends. So I think that also leads to the second point is that both solutions um, can be replicable, which is what you would want is to share what works in one region to share it across other regions. Um, another part about data is that when data is transparent, it can be a great information source, not just for the public, but also for researchers. And that's what's uh, an idea of having those uh, applications and solutions is that better public services actually better mean better quality of life. And they actually encourage and make the communication with the government easier for the citizens. Um, and also on the government end, I think it's the emphasis on time savings as we saw some of the statistics that reduced the days that took it to report or the issues with reporting. So kind of the processes are more smooth. And that also means that there is 
easier connecting of workflows across the departments. I think those two examples really show nicely how those applications really work both for citizens and for the for the local authorities. Thank you. So for uh, journey two, we're actually planning on doing things slightly differently. We just wanted to share the journey uh, mirror board that uh, uh, we we uh, worked in. Uh, so if I will just share my mirror board and I will give the floor to uh, Martin who will do the, the recap for our session. Thank you so much, uh, Cornelia. And just to apologize, apparently the host has disabled video, so I cannot uh, share it, but feel free to, to uh, open my video if you want. Yeah, so so uh, thank you so much. Here's the Myro board, which was the foundation for the journey we had in journey two. And this was really about understanding how sandboxing, not as a, just as a product or an old fashioned data store, but also as a process um, can be used uh, to evolve the digital transformation locally. Um, so yeah, here just we see that there was a good mix of uh, different uh, actors uh, from pop institutions, companies, non institutions, and civil society. So let's just go down to the to the main uh, things here. Yeah, um, and first what we did was that uh, we uh, tried to see how the uh, enablers and also obstacles that are fairly well known, so legal, technical, financial, skills-wise, uh, monitoring, measuring, and, and perhaps other, um, how they resonated with the audience. I think we were 30-something uh, participants, so a very nice uh, sample size. And it seems that at least uh, it is recognized, uh, these uh, issues, um, we probably don't have to go into a lot of detail here, but just I mean, maybe we can share the link to the Miro board or something, uh, or we can we can recap uh, with the colleagues. But just to say that um, there is a fairly good understanding of but of both what is uh, helping us and, and what are the barriers. And we can see, for instance, political support is needed, but also very practical things like uh, data quality uh, and and the legal uh, the governance uh, side around this. And then we had invited um, two of the uh, seven cities that have been engaged in these clinics uh, to reflect on uh, these topics. And uh, that was the uh, city of Helsinki, Timo Ruhameki, and uh, uh, Marco Lombardo from the uh, city of Milan. And it was quite interesting to see that there are similarities, but also uh, different learnings. So um, from Milan's side, it was um, a a uh, very highlighted pain point that uh, private companies aren't already always ready to actually share and make available uh, data in a useful way. And also, uh, somehow within the municipality, there can be structure, structural uh, issues. Um, but actually uh, getting the awareness that this is a priority to have access to data through APIs and so on, um, when you do contracts can be a uh, a pain point, and also, of course, to ensure that the governance around it, GDPR wise, and so is observed. Um, there were other issues, uh, obviously, but but really to to get this joint understanding. And the short version, if I may be so quick, uh, from the Helsinki side was that we're moving from a uh, closed, uh, boxed, if you will, siloed uh, way of delivering services to a flow, we know it from the DevOps, uh, for those who have been doing software development for a long time. And actually we always make the first versions as if they were real systems. So that the sandboxing is more like a concept, uh, which is about this fluidity. It also means that we need different skills uh, to um, work with the data. And they're much more focused on the domain than on the technical sides. So uh, lots of, of uh, learnings there uh, to come on. Uh, we tried to get uh, feedback uh, in a, a little bit more concise way uh, here in, in the uh, ending part. Um, and it's a little bit challenging format maybe to be very explicit in, but uh, I think uh, we, we heard from, from several sides and certainly in the earlier exercises that um, there are some real challenges here in how we set up these processes and they are 
very much also organizational. So this sandboxing has a technical part for sure to it, understanding how we deliver, they deliver services um, you know, in a continuous flow. But there's uh, for sure also organizations and contractual uh, issues related to them. So that was a very short version, which doesn't necessarily uh, justify what was presented. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, all of you. I think we heard fantastic things. I already shared also the contact details in the chat because I was told we will be kicked out at four. We have two more minutes to go for the wrap up. Um, but indeed, it was an amazing session. Uh, many thanks for the many uh, activities and contributions. It was amazing to listen to the discussion. And even a minute ago, I still saw people active on the mirror board of journey one. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the session as much as we did. It was a pleasure. Uh, I hope you can take something out of it also yourself. We will certainly do and benefit from the insights in the future work of the European Union to look into location intelligence, digital transformation and public services. I saw there was a question from Jasmine in the chat. Sorry, we don't have time to address it, but feel free to reach out to us again that we come back to uh, your points on uh, cultural asset mapping and marginalized, marginalized communities. Um, so with this, I think we close the session for today. Again, thanks to all of you. It has been a pleasure and have all a nice afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.